Hi and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we're going to be taking a quick look at a really quick glass shader that you can use to get some really interesting and controlled effects. I've used this on a few projects and it really helps control the shading of the refraction and the ability to give it whatever color you like. Hopefully this won't take too long and you should have something set up in a few minutes. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so first let's grab the default cube and change the X and Y values to 2.4, just to give it a bit of an odd rectangle shape. Next, we're gonna to go to the modifier section on the right hand side and add a bevel and change the amount to 0 0.155 with three segments. Next, right click the cube and shade smooth. Then add a subdivision surface and bump it up to two on the viewport and two on the render. Then finally, add a simple deform and leave it a twist at 45%. We should have something that looks like this. Now we have to make the glass shader. First of all, let's add a mix shader and a refraction BSDF and a glossy BSDF as well. This is how we're gonna create the glass. And we also need a Fresnel. This will give us the IOR to mix the two shaders. Next, we'll add a white noise texture and a texture coordinates and input the object to the vector. Then we need a color ramp and an RGB curves and this will allow us to set the color of the refraction and the curve will allow us to adjust the color spread within the refraction. Take the value from the white noise texture and input it into the factor of the color ramp and the color of the RGB curves. Then set the RGB curves to something like this. Next add the three points to the color ramp and have both ends black. The three in the middle should be at 0 0.25, 0 0.50 and 0.75 exactly. Then you can make them any color that you'd like. And this will be the color that will be within the glass refraction. Input the mix shader to the surface as well, just so we have an output. We need to do some math to make this work properly. Let's get two values. Set one to 1.4 and another to 0 0.650. Connect the color ramp into the color of the refraction and you'll see from the rendered view that nothing has happened just yet. We need to add a map range and a math node set to add. Take the 1.4 value and put it into the Fresnel and into the minimum of the map range and the top value of the add math node. Then take the 0.65 value and put it into the add value of the math node and take the result and add it to the max. Then take the result of the map range and put this into the IOR of the refraction. Take the RGB curves output color and put it into the main value of the mapped range. What we've done here is taking the RGB curve and mapped it to the IOR value of between 1.4 and 2.10. IOR stands for index of refraction and it determines how much the path of light is bent or refracted when entering a material. Just for some reference, here are some IORs for a few different materials. You may not see any results straight away because we need to do a few things to the settings of the file. The first thing we need to do is head over and add an HDRI so there is light coming from all angles. Once you've set this up, you need to turn off glossy so there is no reflections in the glossy surface. In the main file attributes, turn on transparent and turn on transparent glass as well. And at the very bottom of the color management, leave it at filmic and bump it up to high contrast. Now you'll start to see the refraction colors coming through on the object. The last thing we need to do is bump up the strength of the HDRI. I started at 30, but I ended up putting up to about 50 to give us that really strong look. Next, I select the object and go into the timeline and press I to get an initial state, and then go to the end of the timeline and input 360 on the Z axis. This will give us a full rotation of the object. Then I select both the animation keyframes and change the interpolation to linear. Next, we're gonna add some scratches. I add an image texture and input the scratch imperfections from the link included in the description. Add a texture coordinates and a mapping node and connect it from object to vector and then vector to vector of the scratches. Then add a color ramp and take the color of the scratches and input the color from the ramp into the roughness of the refraction. We need to swap the black and white around so you can actually see the scratches. Then pull down the black all the way to the end so we just about see the scratches come through. I also adjust the rotation of the Y just so I can get a better angle of where the scratches are. Okay, last thing to do is head over to the composition editor and click use nodes and then add an output viewer. If you hit the V key on its own, it will zoom out to show you the full image that you've rendered. Next, add a lens distortion and a glare node. In the lens distortion, change the dispersion to 0.02 
and the glare to high and a setting of seven or eight. The last couple of tweaks we can do if we head over to the light paths in the render settings and change the diffuse, glossy and transmission to four and the transparent to four as well. This will just help with the render time. You can also hit the denoise in the render window viewport to speed things up. From here, sit back and let it render. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you learned something and found something useful. Let me know in the comments what you think and if I can help with anything. And I'll catch you on the next video.